Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Miller. Um, I am the pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Lexington, North Carolina. Um, and this is uh, the sermon time that goes along with those who are continuing to have table worship as we are still on the tail end of a, of a pandemic. Um, and so we welcome you for however you use this video. We welcome you to this time. Um, we are a people here in Lexington at First Lutheran who struggle, struggle with that. Um, what does it truly mean to be a welcoming community? And so we do, we do aim to do that. So welcome, welcome to this time. Welcome to this place, even this virtual place. Um, we welcome you. Just to let you know that uh, we have moved our worship outside back to what was traditionally our worship time. So we are now gathering for in-person worship at 1030 in the parking lot. We will continue to do that through May, the 1st of June. The hope is, is to move back inside, masked, socially distanced. Um, so that's where we are. Just a note about this video. Um, I said last time that we would be phasing it out. I kind of got some pushback on that um, good, in a good way. Um, but a lot of people find this, um, this video helpful and I, I'm glad to keep doing it. Um, I'm wondering if it can turn into more maybe a, a Bible kind of study of what the text for today is. If you have any feelings about that, please just let me know and um, I will, I will um, think that through. But it, this seems to be something um, people, particularly people who are not geographically close to Lexington. So, um, so yes, I will, I will, I will think through what the future of this video will be. Hopefully, once COVID nineteen is over. So, um, also to let you know that um, we are still working on children opportunities. We continue to have a regular time in our worship in the parking lot with young people. Um, so, so, so please, kids are welcome in this space and welcome um, during our worship. So please continue to do that and we will have a little time where we can uh, address the day more toward a child. Um, but also please, stay aware that we're trying to think through those kind of future um, opportunities. Also want to say that small groups can start to meet inside if they so choose. Um, groups like the prayer shawl group or the men's group or the women's group or council or whatever um, we have. And at this time, we need you to be masked when you meet, and we would really like you to meet either in the fellowship hall or in the youth room. Um, those are the largest rooms that we have that can accommodate meetings. So please wear your mask and let us know when I say us, the church office, particularly Kelly, just so we don't have groups um, on top of each other. Um, we don't wanna double book groups in, in, a, in a place. So if you could just let us know, it gives us a little heads up as we plan to accommodate your meeting. So, um, so with all that said, uh, let us take this time now to focus our hearts and minds with our prelude as we come into our Lord's presence. <laughs>
according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Um, we continue in the Gospel of John during this um, Easter season. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I actually have the Paschal candle still lit. We keep the Paschal candle lit during, um, during this season, uh, the season of Easter. Uh, a, a candle which is, a, is Paschal, it reminds us of the Paschal mystery. It's of the death and resurrection of our Lord. Um, and in the Gospel of John, there's a third piece to that formula that's very important. It, it's the death, the resurrection, and the ascension. Um, and in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaks of leaving and speaks of rot being raised up and speaks of, of all these things. And, and, and you would ask, well, what do you mean, Jesus? Do you mean um, leaving when you die or leaving when you ascend to heaven, or what, what does it mean to leave? And in the Gospel of John, that's all the same thing, right? Death, resurrection, and ascension. All is, is kind of part of it all. It's, it's dying to the world's brokenness. It's rising and, defe and, and defeating that brokenness and sin and death. And it's ascending to the Father so that the world can be reconciled with God. That's, that's part of it all. So when, when Jesus speaks, he's speaking of all of that. Why do, I, why do I tell you that with the vine? Because in the Gospel of John, everything has an important context and everything is connected to everything else. It's one big long story. It's kind of like one of those things where you really should just sit down and read it from the first chapter to the first verse all the way to the end because everything connects and builds and it's a very narrative text. Why do I tell you that? Because this is toward the end of something that kind of started with Jesus and it started with Jesus gathering his disciples, um, feeding them a meal, um, we commonly call the Last Supper washing their feet and giving them a commandment. Um, and that commandment is to love. And here we are at the 15th chapter. It's this long, long, several chapters of what we call the farewell discourse. It's Jesus preparing the people he loves for his physical absence. He talks about that advocate the spirit the one who speaks on our behalf who will be who will be with us and um he, he talks about going to prepare places for us and he talks about what we do in the meantime and of course the example of that is to wash feet but the kind of the crescendo of it all we see in john three sixteen, and we see here is what does he achingly want his disciples and those followers and the world to do. Um, to do exactly what he is doing, he has done, he will do. 
and that is God so loves the world that th 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 this action is taking place. So it's this kind of this, it's this almost parental figure who is leaving his children, but not really leaving his children, and wants them to know what's most important. We also get the I am statements. I am the vine, you are the branches. It's a, it's a, it's a tool, a literary tool that if, if you were, if you're Jewish, I mean, you would instantly think of Moses looking at the burning bush, having the burning bush tell you that you're going to go to the most powerful man in the world, Pharaoh, and you're going to ask him to release all of his slaves. And of course, Moses wants to know, I, I have to have some authority. Who do I say sent me? And the burning bush, which is the voice of God says, tell them I am. So it's, it's not a very veiled reference to the divine Jesus. I, I am, I am God. I am the Father and the Father is in me. And where the Father is, there I am too. And he abides in the Father, and the Father abides in him. Meaning, where he is, there is the Father, there is the Spirit. It's, our, it's the beginning of what will eventually become, for Christians, our Trinitarian theology. And so, he's, he's longing for his children, Jesus, you know, his sheep. Maybe that's a better, I am, we can use what we used last Sunday. I am the shepherd, you are the sheep. Um, he longs for his sheep to do exactly what the shepherd does, and that is to love, to lay down his life for his friends, um, to love one another, to love the world, to, to be like God, and to say to abide I abide in the Father. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And guess what? I am in you, is what he's saying. So stay connected to me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Um, I am the vine. You are the branches. And if you disconnect yourself from this, disconnect yourself from the very thing that gives you the ability to love in greater ways and and this is the, the problem that we you know in our technological culture maybe we need to go out and watch how things grow right um, the, the vine is the source of nutrition the vine is the source of life and to cut, be cut off from that means eventually you cannot sustain yourself and it's this longing shepherd, this longing parent who is longing to tell them to stay connected, stay connected. And it's interesting who gets pruned in this text. Obviously the vine, the vines, if they, if they are not connected, they die. But who gets pruned? It's the ones who bear fruit that get cut back, right? Um, to bear more fruit, it seems counterintuitive, but if you are a if you are a winemaker and a grape grower, you know that if you have this wonderful bushel or bushel or what whatever we call a group of grapes, if I want more next year, I just don't hope that produces. I cut it back so it can grow more. So it's this departing Jesus. Who is longing, longing? It, it feels like it feels to me. You know, I have adult children, and it feels like a parent looking at his at their children and saying, "Don't forget to call your mother. Stay, stay connected. Stay connected to who you are. Stay connected to the people that love you." you know, it, it's that. Please, please. Please stay connected. That's the sort of, and, and let's get to the whole burning of branches thing. Um, this is not about 
God separating the sheep and the goats. That's in the Gospel of Matthew. We'll do that. We'll do that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. This is not, this is the Gospel of John. Judgment is for those who choose to disconnect. In essence, judgment is something we bring upon ourselves. And we, we can choose to stay connected or don't, don't say to stay connected. Um, and, 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 and in the end, what is the fruit of the Spirit? If you read on past the verses that we did this morning, it, it says it right there. What is the fruit of the Spirit? How will they know we are Christ followers? Right? Because we are strong and get our political way? Or that look at the look at this beautiful wealth we have all what you know god must love us to give us all of this or you know life's been pretty good so therefore i must be loved and or you know when people say i'm so oh look at the nice car you just got or look at the nice house you have and what do we say gee i sure am blessed what, what is the fruit? What is it that God is looking for? What is God pruning, pruning us for? And in the Gospel of John, this is not, this is not a, a secret. How will God know us? God will know us. And the world will know God through us by our fruit, which is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is the most important thing, particularly in the Gospel of John. Every church, every church, every church says that they're a friendly church. Every church puts on their sign, all are welcome. The fruit of the Spirit is what happens when, when the stranger walks through your door. Right? That's, that's what matters. When the stranger walks through the door, that's how they will know, does this church bear fruit? And sometimes we have to prune ourselves. Sometimes we have to let go of things so that we can be more loving. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, watching a statistical thing. There's a, a group of, if you look on, you know, these statistical Gallup surveys and stuff on religion, they'll, they'll say, you know, what religion do you affiliate with? What, if you say Christian, well, what denomination, you know, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, Episcopalian, whatever. And, and then they give you the option of, of none. You, 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 you don't affiliate with any. Um, it's interesting because that doesn't, the nuns are the fastest growing category of all of them. They are not particularly atheist or agnostic. Most of them, that's kind of where the whole spiritual but not religious kind of stuff comes from. On the other hand, um, they looked at them and asked them, how are you, know, are you opposed to going to a church? And the answer was no. And then they asked, how often do you go? And it was once or twice a year. And what was shocking to see was, is that the people who um, were disaffiliating statistically did not come any more or any less than people in our pews. They just felt no social obligation to be, to have, there was no social obligation to recognize themselves as religious. We're religious, that's over. In essence, what we are dealing with is we're dealing with the truth. And the truth is, a lot of people call themselves something and it has less to do with Jesus, and it has more to do with social obligation. The other thing that was sort of shocking to see is, is that 
it had more to do, people pick their church not by their theology, how do you think about God, but they chose it more about their political persuasion, conservative church, liberal church. Um, that's probably not surprising either. Which, which made, made me think, so what do, what do we do? What do we do as a church? What, what, what do I do as the leader of a faith community that's statistically dying, but has frankly been decreasing since I was ordained 25 years? And the day I was ordained, we struggled with the decline. What, what do we do? And, and what do we do with this growing number of people who think they know the church? Probably a lot of them have been hurt by the church. What, what, what do we do, right? What do we do? Keep them connected to Christ. We keep ourselves connected to Christ. And how do we do that? How do we stay connected? How, how, how do we fight the good fight, right? How, what do we do? What do we do as the church? We do exactly what Jesus told us to do. We abide in God. We abide in Christ because Christ abides in us. And we bear fruit. And what that is that fruit? That fruit is love, right? Um, and love is hard. It's a hard business. But that's, that's, that, that's the truth. The truth is come in all of our brokenness and let us love you as God loves you and forgive us when we don't do that well. Um, that, that's, that's, that's all we got, right? But that's all we should have had in the first place. This, this is not about serving people. Um, this isn't about me serving myself. This room is about how do we help this is a tool, it's a beautiful tool, which I'm so proud to be the pastor of. And who am I as a pastor? Right? These are things that help us stay connected. Um, we are, I lit all the candles and, and I wanted us to be back because we're gonna be, we never stop this, this all happens in the parking lot. But, but this, this being baptism, baptism, the waters of baptism, where we are named and claimed as children of God. And, and this, this is the Eucharist. It's the table of our Lord in which we gather, and we receive our Lord through bread and through cup, through body and through blood, and we stay connected. And, and here's the pulpit, and, and there's the lectern, and, and those are the places where we hear the word preached, and we hear the word read, and, and of course, there is the organ where, where it gathers us together to sing praises and to connect us. And then here are the people in the nave, the people, the branches, and, and the ones who are struggling to stay connected, abiding in Christ so they can bear the fruit of love in the world. Maybe people, it's not that people are just not feeling socially obligated. Maybe it's just that people don't see a loving church. And maybe God needs to prune it a little bit or a lot, maybe. Right? Maybe we need to face the truth and some of those things that just need to be let go of so that we can bear more fruit. And that's, and that's the good news. The good news is not that we are going to save the church. A young Pastor Matt used to think that, right? The good news is we abide in love. And we help others to do that too. 
that, if, if this all goes away, that's still the truth. And that truth is eternal. And that's the good news, right? And it's a little painful to be pruned, right? It's, 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 it's kind of a painful process. But in the end, there is Christ. And in the beginning, there was Christ. And in the meantime, there's Christ. So let us stay connected. Amen.